Hi there everyone, welcome back for another video, a test drive video, and today's the Fiat 500 electric. Now as a mini electric owner, um, me testing the Fiat 500 is going to be very, very interesting because you would think that there's a lot of comparisons. Some people would say I'm not sure between the mini or the Fiat, and mostly it's probably to do with the looks of the car, not necessarily how it drives or the EV credentials, all those sort of things. So I'm very, very interested as to how these two compare. The reason for the test drive, well, Susan, my wife, is very interested in that it's a beautiful little car. She likes the look of it. So um, I was thinking, well, I need to get her out of a petrol mini sometime. So maybe, just maybe, this Cabriolet Fiat 500 would be just what we're looking for. So if you're looking for the very, very simple quick answer, the Mini Electric is a much better car. Um, the Fiat 500 looks better on paper, and some people might say it looks better in person. I personally don't think it does, but the Mini is a better car. And just because the Fiat's got a bigger battery doesn't make it much better as an electric car. And yes, it can probably, in some situations, go 30 or 40 miles further than the Mini, but there are other situations where the Mini will be very, very close to the range of the Fiat 500, and that might surprise people. So, in my opinion, the Mini Electric is the winner by a long, long way. I would not entertain buying the Fiat 500 at all. Um, there are some significant issues um, with the car, as far as I'm concerned, and that's what this video is going to cover. Why, not just because I own a Mini Electric, but why I genuinely believe this Fiat 500 looks the part, just does not deliver. So as soon as I get the car home from the dealership, uh, I go on camera and give you an update. Well, here's the first love it or hate it. Will you like the ice cream van sand as it starts up? It's not my favorite. Well, this is fun, isn't it? Um, I'm sat in this Fiat 500 electric trying to do a review video, trying to film and talk about what I've experienced with the car and my phone's continually overheating and I can't get the interior of the Fiat cool enough to cool the phone down. Um, the air conditioning, as you can hear, the fan is on quite high to try and cool the car down, but it's, it's not coming out very, very cold. And it's on the lowest possible setting, which is below 16 degrees C inside. Um, it's just not coming down in temperature, so I'm struggling a little bit here. What I, what I was trying to say to you um, in the earlier part <laughs> that's cut out of this video is what I'm experiencing with the car so far is all a little bit mixed. Um, I'm getting mixed messages from different dealerships and mixed the way the car's performing. Um, I couldn't quite get active cruise control to work with steering in the last model that I tested, which was the same as this, the La Prima convertible. This is a La Prima convertible as well. It's an identical car. But this one seems to have some firmware problems or some technical glitches. This car almost seems like a pre-production car um, and a very early test car, like the ones that came to the UK with MG when they, there was five or six of them that came. Half the software features didn't really work. I've got um, a lot of yellow warnings on the screen. It looks like um, anti-collision is off, even though I have have changed the settings and tried to turn it on. Um, it doesn't look like the Lane Keep Assist features work. And the dealer did say there are some software glitches and it needs a firmware upgrade. So my initial impression is, even though this is a demonstrator car, not a pre-production car, and even though they're taking orders and selling these cars, firmware seems a little bit glitchy. And it doesn't quite work reliably in some of these technical features. Now, whether that's indicative of all of them or whether that's just these two cars that I've tested, I'm not quite sure. Um, but I'm, I'm not having a good time in getting all of these things to work. Um, you press the power button on to turn the car on, but you have to press it a second time. Sometimes I'm pressing the D button to go into drive, but it wants a longer, more assured press. So it's not seeming as crisp and as perfect as you would expect and certainly that I'm experiencing in the Mini Electric. So software wise and the interface wise, it's got a lot of features. It's got more features than my Mini Electric, such as, you know, the active cruise control and the lane keep assist. My Mini doesn't have those, but if they don't work very well and I haven't been able to get them to work properly in the two cars that I've tested, 
that's not a very good message so hopefully these are very early cars hopefully it is just software and they do improve it um, but sorry I, I can't test those features what I was trying to say in my previous um, video that cut out was that I drove back from the dealership about 10, 11 miles, something like that. I'll put the trip information up on the screen now um, and managed 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour until we reached the village environment where it's just 30 miles an hour. And then going through the last couple of miles in villages, the efficiency went up to 4.4 miles per kilowatt hour. And... I think that gives me a clue on a perfect day like today it's 28 degrees at 29 degrees at the moment it's a pretty perfect day for electric cars um, so I'm not sure if that's very good at all normal driving 3.9 to 4.4 on a mixed cycle um, so we're talking high threes for longer distance dual carriageway um, drives in the car 42 kilowatt hour battery is what they advertise is it 37.3 37.2 actual usable battery size um, I think I saw on EV database so if you work those things out the range is nowhere near the 199 miles that's advertised on the side of the car um, the first test drive that I did uh, I did just around the city so 20 to 30 miles an hour just city driving lots of regen stop and start in the Ionic for Kona and the Mini Electric, the cars that um, are really efficient, the ones that I've tested before, that's where they excel and you'll get the best efficiency. I would have expected 6.2 or more um, from those sort of cars. In this car, 5.4, I think I saw 5.5 just for a few seconds, miles per kilowatt hour. So not as good as the best electric cars, but equally comparable to cars, I think, like the Nissan Leaf, like the Zoe, like oh, Honda e, which was quite bad efficiency, and the Corsa, which I thought was quite bad efficiency. I'm not sure if this is quite in that territory yet, but hopefully we'll find out, because I'm going to do an ultimate um, test run in a minute on the test circuit that I've got here locally, and it's only 20, 30, 40 miles an hour, it's an uphill, downhill, a good mixed drive, but very, very slow country road driving, and again, 6.2 was what the Mini Electric managed with that, and the Kona Electric and the Ionic were similarly at the 6 pluses, um, they were very, very good with those. So my view of that test run, it's not an indicative level of efficiency to help you with range for n normal use, but it shows you what the ultimate level, it shows what the best you can expect out of the car. Um, there might be certain ex uh, situations where it's all downhill and you get even better, but I, I think this test run gives you a like-for-like -like comparison of what the best you can expect. So before I set off with this test drive, let me explain some of the things that I have seen and I have tried as I turn the air conditioning down again. If I try and explain some of the things I have seen with the car, the media interface um, is a bit clumsy and a bit um, awkward. I can't find things. I can't find trip information over on the 10 inch, what well, looks like 10 inch media screen, but I can find them all on the main screen. And finding some of the settings and options, even the guy at the dealership couldn't find what I wanted in these EV pages. There's a very nice instant consumption um, information there which shows the power that you're using and the regen power that you're gaining back. Um, that's really, really good. It also shows how many kilowatts you're using in the climate control. For example, sat here with air conditioning on, on low fan speed, we're using one kilowatt. If I turn the fan speed up, it still says one kilowatt. All right, so it's a rounded up number. It's not changing. It's just it's just one kilowatt is showing but it's a nice power flow diagram like a lot of cars um, shows that but I do like it that it tells you your kilowatts of regen and the power and what I saw was in normal stroke range mode um, the car was going up to 95 kilowatts of power and in Sherpa mode which is the get you home mode it was only going up to 60 62 kilowatts I think so much more reduced power it really is a get you home mode the Sherpa mode and uh, I've tried all of the different options and basically it's there isn't like a sport mode so it's normal which is 
more coasting there's very, very little regen if any it just feels like coasting mode to me so normal mode is coasting range mode is where you're using regen so it's one pedal driving facility um, they're referring to it at the dealers as one pedal driving but my interpretation is is normal is without any regen range is with some regen and sherpa um, is with all the air conditioning off and all of the um, power delivery turned right down to try and maximize your range so that's what I've seen on the modes. There's a, there's a lot to talk about about the differences between the Mini and the Fiat 500, and I'll do that along the journey in the test drive. But I, I wanted to try and just introduce you to the car, give you the heads up that I'm being told they're, they're a little bit glitchy at the moment, software-wise, and that's what I'm experiencing. But other than that, the car's working really well. It's very odd that the key fob that I'm using, um, they've given me the key fob. It does appear to unlock the car, but it doesn't go click or clunk. I don't, don't hear anything. And uh, when the car was charging, I've char charged it on the Zappi. Um, I pressed the unlock button, which you would normally do, and that would unlock the charge cable so you can unplug. And it, it didn't do it. So I couldn't lock the car, unlock it, and pull the charge cable out. I had to go to the charger and turn it off there which uh, <laughs> if my head is around that correctly that's all right here on my zappy because i can turn the charger off but if i plug it in on like a pod point charger where it's continually charging then it locks it on the pod point end and if i can't unlock it using the key fob i'd end up with a car that's just charging and i can't stop it until the pod point stops charging um so yeah that didn't work very well now what again whether i just need to try a few more things or maybe there's some options you know i haven't read the manual yet but a little bit a little bit odd and concerning that doing what you do with every other car just use the unlock and lock button on the key fob and that releases the plug um on the car didn't work i'll try it again later just to see if i've done something absolutely daft but a bit of a quirk Okay, so while I was charging, um, I also had a look at the charge settings, and if I just bring them up now, there's a lovely charging level on it with one to five on low to high, and it says, in case of issue during charging, select a lower level. So it's charge rate, current rate, so you can reduce the amount of current down, and it charges it, and there are five levels of it. Really, really good, so fear, well done. I do like reduced charging levels. So at the highest on the charger that I've got now, a home charger, I would get 7.2 kilowatts, but you can reduce it right down and charge at just 1.5. So that's without using any special eco chargers and anything off solar, etc. I do like that. Nice feature. You're in control of the speed of power you're getting into it. The downside, it doesn't tell you how many kilowatts are being charged. So even though you've got this lovely charging level, while it's charging, it doesn't tell you the kilowatts that you're actually receiving. You have to look at the charger to see them. Um, so not perfect. But not bad. The screens are nice and crystal clear. I love the one on the dash and the information. The battery indicator and the speedo and the trip information, the sat nav, everything that's in there looks really nice. I, I do like the display. So anyway, um, that's enough as an introduction. This is going to be a really long video at this rate. Um, let's go for a drive and see what efficiency we can really get out of this car. I've just manoeuvred out of my driveway and um, experienced the reversing camera for the first time. And it was okay, it was good, and it had the right lines, and it beeped at you when you're getting close to things, so it was effective. But the screen wasn't as crystal clear. The camera is not as good as the Mini, so not like a high definition. If anything, I'd say more 720p, not 1080p. You know, it's that sort of difference. It was okay, but not, uh, not brilliant. And the low speed level manoeuvring backwards and forwards it held you um, so we're in the mini it feels like there's nothing engaged and you have to press the accelerator to get it to move but judging how far you have to press the accelerator before it actually moves is a bit of a challenge um, in in this it seems to stop and start a bit easier um, so with the mini you start rolling and you sort of continue continue to roll it's not jerky on and off this oh how, how do I explain it it was it was effective but it held you a lot more. There was a lot more hold control. That's how I would describe it in the Fiat 500. So yeah, um, very good for um, 
city driving. Um, the turning circle seemed very good in this. I'd say better than the Mini. Obviously not as good as the Honda E, because the Honda E has the, the little party piece of it. But uh, yeah, very good little city car. Um, and with that hold ability, so it's going to hold you as you're moving, gives you a lot more confidence about um, judging spaces and moving in tight, small spaces. What we're doing now is on my very short um, test route, which I think is five or six miles as a loop. And what I've been doing is doing this at really low speeds. So now I'm doing 34 miles an hour. I'm trying to have my foot off the throttle as much as I can. It's, it's virtually hypermiling. So I'm doing the best I can to get the best efficiency. As I'm going uphill, I'm trying not to accelerate. I'm trying to use the minimum energy possible. And this small, low speed route should give you the ultimate efficiency that you can expect from the car. So not what you should expect as normal, not what you should expect in winter, not what you should expect in normal driving, and I'm using my fingers for the quotes there, um, but the ultimate of what it can do. So why I do that is so that when you compare to the different cars I've tested, it can give you an indication of what the ultimate efficiency ability of the car is. So it's not necessarily showing you what the drag factor is, so the faster you go, the more efficient or less efficient the car is going to be. It's not going to give you that difference uh, between the cars, but it's going to give you the battery and motor ability in the car and what it can actually achieve. And that has been really interesting because so far it's highlighted that the Honda E and the Corsa that I tested were quite poor on efficiency and the Ionic, Kona and Mini Electric were all very, very good at efficiency. So anyway, we've reset the trip. Um, we've done 1.9 miles so far and the average consumption display is showing 2.4 miles per kilowatt hour. 2.5 and we've just reached a downhill area where god i gotta say in my mini i'd be way over five already so um yeah that's not a good indication to start with but as we know with data and displays they're not always accurate so you've got to give give it time to do its thing and hopefully over a better period of time give you something more accurate Regen wise, a couple of things that I can say is the car was 100% full, um, this one, when I um, picked it up. So unlike the Corsa, which has no regen for ages and ages when it's 100% full, this did have regen. So it's obviously got some headroom at the top of the battery and how it works. So that's good. But um, in normal mode, there's no regen. As I've said before, in range mode, there is regen. And in Sherpa mode, there is regen. They describe it as one pedal driving and yeah, it, it sort of is one pedal driving. Um, you don't have to use the brake very much, but it's not proper one pedal driving, um, like in the Nissan Leaf um, with e-pedal, and definitely not like the Kona, the Ionic, and my Mini, um, which are much better at one pedal driving. The regen is stronger. The regen in this is really weak. So I'm doing 36 miles an hour. If I take my foot off the throttle, the display is showing a maximum of 30 kilowatts of regen, now 25 to 15. So 30 kilowatts of regen as a maximum uh, from decelerating. And that's about the maximum I've seen. Even if decelerating from around 60, 70 miles an hour, you don't get as much as 30. Uh, I, was, I was seeing 28 as the maximum at higher speed. Now with the Kona, it was over 100 kilowatts. So with the Hyundai drivetrain and Kia as well, you can start to see that's how they get some of their extra efficiency. They're getting it back in regen where this isn't. So I'll be very, very surprised if this does very well on this test just because of the regen ability. But I'm doing as much regen as I can to make it as efficient as I can. Yes, the air conditioning is on. So it's going to take a tad off of that, but it says it's using one kilowatt of power for the climate control. But whether you change the temperature up and change the fan speed up, it just shows one kilowatt anyway. So it's a very heavily rounded figure, I would guess. So what's this car like? Um, let's try and give you a sort of very quick summary. I don't want this to be a review where I tell you all of the features in the car because you can look those up in a manual. You can look those up in the specification. I want to tell you the things that you experience while you're driving the car. And the first thing to say is why would you want to buy this Fiat 500e, the electric? Well, I think there's one big reason as to why you would want to buy it. 
and that's because it's different so the same as the honda e the same as the mini electric this fiat 500 electric is different it's not an suv it's not a crossover it's not a euro box it's got character it's got style um, it's got some retro influence to it it's small you have to compromise on space it is different and uh, that's what's going to sell it people that want to be individuals that want to love their car and enjoy the ownership experience they're either going to love the look of this car and buy it because of the color and the look um, rather than whether it's got active cruise control or how big the battery is or all those sort of things and it's the same with the mini electric and same with the honda e but some people will prefer the look of the honda and the feel of it some people will prefer the look and the drive of the mini electric but some people will love the fiat 500 and those are the people that will buy it so yeah it's, it's an interesting sector in the market because it doesn't really matter whether this is a good electric car or a bad electric car people are going to want to buy it because they love the car that's my opinion anyway so i think it'll sell i think it'll do well um, the fact that you've got a sunroof option and a convertible option will do really really well the people i think that are likely to buy the car are more likely to be girls and ladies um than men and the reason i say that is because the feel of the car isn't sporty the feel of the car isn't um with a lot of driver communication it's a very soft light to touch i'm just moving the steering wheel now and it's so fingertip light it's it's lovely and so the maneuverability and how light it feels in your hands is really really nice complete opposite to the mini where the steering is tight and almost heavy as if there's no power steering there's a lot of feel to it there's a lot of wallow in the corners of this fiat 500 it's very very soft on suspension but as we go over a bump there it actually goes over the bumps worse than the mini it it does lump over the bumps a lot more almost as if it's got two bigger wheels and very hard tires so this has 17 inch wheels on it maybe the smaller wheels um, with smaller tires would be better for comfort because this isn't this is an odd an odd compromise between soft and wallowy that i am moving about a little bit and also very l lumpy and hard over bumps more so than the mini um, but I think it definitely suits somebody that wants to be more city driving um, or comfortable long distance driving not someone that's gonna rag around the country lanes and enjoy the uh, dynamic feeling of the car so the people that want to buy a mini are probably gonna like the driving dynamics and the go-kart feel of the mini and that's why they like it and the shape and the look and the feel of the car of course but the Fiat 500 doesn't have those driving dynamics it's much much softer so again it will appeal to different people the controls are nice they're adequate um, the media system being touch screen is quite modern I really like that the air conditioning controls are both manual buttons and can be done from the screen that's good um, if you go for the audio controls for the volume then nowhere around the screen there's a odd rotary dial down where the handbrake is um, to change the volume um, so, so that's a little bit quirky the V500 is full of little quirks like that though it's like the door there's a button to open the door not a catch uh, but there's then also a catch that's hidden away as like a secondary way of opening the doors so very very odd but the recessed door handles on the outside look very aerodynamic and very good to have them recessed in the door I really like them so there's some nice designed features of this car and it adds to the uniqueness one of the things that the dealership have told me is the unique selling point is in, instead of having a spaceship sound for when you're below 20 miles an hour this below 14 miles an hour plays an Italian opera song or something like that um, I've heard it once where it sounded like music and most of the time it does sound just like a noise um, so I'm not sure if I can capture that it's quite quiet it's unobtrusive so it's quite nice and the fact that it is doing something different but this is a pleasant drive I would say as a comparison what does it feel like to other cars and probably the Zoe it feels more Zoe like in here the performance is adequate 
good there's lots of torque the acceleration's okay you can overtake in it but it seems quite tame and quite low um, in its performance and as we saw it maxed out at 90 95 kilowatts of power so um, nothing like the mini at all so if you're thinking that because they're retro cars because they're small what's the comparison between them I, I think that comparison is almost irrelevant because you're either a mini fan or a Fiat 500 fan you're either um, the sort of person that wants some driving dynamics and sportiness or you don't and each car will appeal because of those different dynamics that they have range is a very interesting one you know with electric cars it's the big thing that everyone talks about and everyone wants to know so some people will say the fiat 500 is a better electric car because it's got a bigger battery and a bigger range than the mini but as you know from my test drives in the mini electric and also my driving 100 miles is easy 120 miles is average 140 miles is certainly easily possible in the summer with my mini electric now this car says 199 miles of range but my test drive just around the city which should be very very good efficiency showed that 199 miles is what you can get with city driving not mixed driving if you then look at the efficiency that i sh saw driving back home was 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour let's call it four um, four miles per kilowatt hour times the battery size that's available 37 120 148 so it's a bit more than the mini because i think driving at those speeds i'd probably only get 120 but it's not a lot more and when i talked to one of the guys in the dealership he said he lived at king's lynn and had driven there and back in the car which is 40 miles each way 80 miles and indicated that the car had a range of 120 miles so even though the marketing material for this says it's a 42 kilowatt hour battery with a 199 mile range so you think you're getting a much better electric car than the mini electric if you're going to drive it normally not like miss daisy you might only get a range of 120 miles and this has been in more spring and summer conditions not winter so actually there's not such a big difference between the range of the mini and the range of this fiat 500 electric from what i'm hearing from the guy in the showroom and my experience so far so let's update you so we're on the second lap going up the hill so we're not back down to the um, bottom of that hill where it was woefully 2.5 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour but um, on lap one I'd expect it to be way over five miles per kilowatt hour in yeah I haven't said any euro equivalents I'll try and put those up on the screen for those people with um, kilometers that are used in their country but anyway we're at 4.1 miles per kilowatt hour at the moment and now on the descent so that's not very good and in every car I've tested we've got to almost the ultimate performance after the second lap so I'll, I'll probably do three laps in this car um, and talk you through all sorts of features and thoughts as we go but what can I see as I'm decelerating um, we've got a power meter and it's it's not yeah it's fluctuating between power and charge so when it's showing nothing that's sort of coasting i suppose in fact in fact if i just slip it into normal mode now take my foot off the throttle so that's my foot off the throttle now we're doing 31 miles an hour 30 miles an hour it's hardly decelerating so 28 miles an hour now but we are almost on a flat road so it just doesn't feel like there's any resistance at all it's a nice coasting feel i actually like cars that can coast really well and the miles per kilowatt hour instantaneously doesn't show up but the power says minus two kilowatts so we are recharging very very slowly anyway we're down to 21 miles an hour so let's slip it into range mode which it suddenly kicks in the regen and brings me to much more to a stop but anyway so that sort of proves what normal modes like with the coasting and some people do prefer coasting and think coasting on longer distance trips um, is a better more economical way of driving whereas um, with regen you don't really need to use regen on longer trips set the cruise control and just keep driving at the same speed that's a very good way for efficiency so we're almost at the bottom of the hill now so on the first lap it showed 2.5 2.6 miles per kilowatt hour on the second lap 
4.6 miles per kilowatt hour yeah that's um that's not good at all so on my city driving as i said um after it warmed up a bit so probably in the first five minutes i didn't get very much um, this car's had more driving so it should have warmed up uh, i managed a total in the city of 5.4 just slightly up to 5.5 miles per kilowatt hour so i'll be very surprised if i can't get to that level but i do have air conditioning on and i didn't in the city driving and as I've said before, I can't turn the air conditioning off because the camera will cut out and then I can't do the review. Um, what I'll try to do is, without the camera going, I'll have a go and see what can happen efficiency-wise. Okay, we're just going to change the route slightly because I, I have done that previously on the test. So we're just cutting a slight corner. 4.6 miles per kilowatt hour. I'm trying everything I can to get the best efficiency possible out of this car without actually just putting it in cruise control at 20 miles an hour, which is not a very good thing to do. But it's a very pleasant place to be. Um, okay, back to test drive wise. Things that I like, um, I like the materials. They feel hard and plasticky, but they look very soft and tactile and very good quality. So there's an unusual mix here of really high quality. The steering wheel feels fantastic. The seats look and feel really high quality. And some of the plastics look really cheap. The um, visors in the front are incredibly cheap and nasty. The charging cap plug that goes over the socket is the cheapest and nastiest I've seen. So it's got a very odd feel of luxury and high quality that you get for your 30,000 plus pounds of this car. But then there's some really nasty, cheap and nasty stuff. The controls on the steering wheel are very much like the Minis, I think. Um, they're very nice. They're nice and flat. They're piano black, but they respond well in your fingers. They do seem to work. The air conditioning controls are toggle switches, a bit, a bit more like the Mini, um, toggling up and down for changing fan speeds or temperatures up and down. So very, very nice. This model um, is the convertible, and there's a large amount of headroom here. Uh, I'm quite surprised how tall inside the car is. But um, space in the back, I, I haven't really even tried getting in the back, but from the look of it, there's less space than my Mini even, so quite, quite cramped in the back. Boot space is similar to the Mini, but it's more compromised on the shape of the roof and the angle. So, we, for example, we could get Cracker in, but I don't think you'd get a larger dog in because of the angle of the roof and how the dog will have to sit as far back towards the seats to actually get in without hitting the head. So, um, an okay boot space, similar to the Mini, but compromised but with this convertible model it's not a hatchback because the roof goes back to the point where the hatch would normally be this is more like a saloon like a sedan car it's got a it's got a little opening flap on it um, not a hatch and you can't reach through to the rear seats because it's fixed where the convertible part of the roof is so yeah the convertible changes the um, boot space and boot accessibility Anyway, um, oh, I've got something down there. I've got the um, number of miles that we've travelled, some trip meter, flashing at the bottom. It's flashing 799. I've no idea why it's flashing. Why, why would it flash the odometer, odometer at me? Uh, again, there's some, there's some quirkiness with this car. Um, it's nice, but every now and then you think, oh, why have they done that? One of the um, not so good things on the car, you know, there's plenty of space for two in here and I'm nice and comfortable. Uh, my arms rest nicely on the armrest of the door. My arm rests nicely on the center armrest area. So it's very comfortable to drive. But if you try and reach down to adjust the height of the seat or the rake of the seat back, um, your hand basically rubs against the door and you have to almost squeeze it in like you're looking for change down the back of a sofa. And it is, it's not comfortable at all. It, there is no space there to do it. You, can, you can't do it without touching the side of the door. 
So that's not good. They've squeezed the seats over to the outside as far as they can go to the point where the controls for the seat aren't easily accessible without rubbing your hand. If you had thick gloves on, or you've got big hands, well, I think you could pretty much forget adjusting your seat while you're driving. You need to open your door to do it. So it's, it, there's a good mixture of stuff going on in this car. It's a light, airy feel. The windscreen area looks bigger and deeper than the Mini. Um, the side windows, yeah, there's a lot of glass area. Visibility is very good. There's a big A pillar down here, um, but I don't mind the A pillars necessarily, that they're, they're all right. So I can judge the length of the car and the bonnet quite well, even though I can't, can't see the bonnet at all. And I've got the seat on its lowest possible setting. Now, even though I'm down as low as I can go, I actually feel like I'm riding quite high up in the car. So this car will definitely suit people that like a high up driving position. So it'll suit Susan, it'll suit my wife. Whereas me, I like to sit as low down and sporty as I possibly can. But the B pillar, is very good because it's behind my head. So even though I'm low down and I've got the seat quite far back, because I like to lay back in the seats, the B pillar is not in the way and I can see out of the corner of the rear uh, window as well. So visibility is quite good. Unlike the Corsa I tested where you turn around and all you got is a B pillar right in your face, which was awful, absolutely awful. So there's a lot of positivity with this car and if, um, you're not going to have the software glitchy problems that this has because they're going to have fixed it hopefully um, that would be a very good experience but mixed on quality I think what you'll find is people that love the car will not worry and overlook the negatives of the hard plastics and cheap this and cheap that they, they won't mind those they'll focus on the things that are wonderful so I, I can imagine that enough people will really like the design of this car and like the look of it to forgive it it's not faults nuances and again I think I started there didn't I the people want to buy this car want something individual they don't want a euro box that just works so sometimes faults or things that aren't so good add characters to the car Right here we go we're just starting at lap three and we're up to 5.1 miles per kilowatt hour so we're getting there it's taking a bit longer to warm up now I do wonder whether that's the inaccuracy of the gauges not the efficiency of the car because I did notice that before it showed very very low miles per kilowatt hour values when in other electric cars I've seen very good uh, miles per kilowatt hour figures at those same points so I wonder if this is giving you a not so accurate not so good um, figure in the first mile or so and it takes a little while to average out and get more accurate because again it doesn't mean it's real it's just a number that it's presenting and what we don't know is whether it's a real number or an accurate number it hasn't gone up and down it's been quite steady how it's coming down so when I picked the car up it said 161 I think that's the number that it said and then we're 146 I think back there when we started these laps it's now down to 135 and we have done 13.6 miles so 13.6 miles added on to 135 140 151 so the range has gone up because I'm being more economical and I am it's working it's doing what it should do and it's adjusting slowly so I think the GOM the gasometer in here is actually quite good so we're just coming up to the brow of the hill it's all downhill now going down to probably the point where it should be the best efficiency that you can expect and we're currently at five miles per kilowatt hour so it's gone down a little bit because we've come uphill but now we've got the downhill and the regen it should get better but to me everything is pointing towards this car being nowhere near as efficient as a Kona as an Ionic or a mini electric and by what degree well at the moment we're seeing 5.0 5.1 miles per kilowatt hour and around the city I saw 5.4 miles per kilowatt hour in my previous test drive compare that to the best I got on test drives with the mini electric of 6.2 gives you an idea that we're talking between 10 and 15 percent 
worse efficiency. So if it's got a bigger battery, so instead of 33 kilowatt hours, it's got a 42 kilowatt hour battery. So that's, um, how many would that be? 20% off 42 would be eight, would be 30. So it's, it's probably a 30% more battery, but 20% less efficiency. And hence, we came to those calculations earlier, saying that potentially this hasn't got much more range than the Mini. So even though it looks like it's got a bigger battery, even though it looks like it's got a bigger advertised range, there's probably not that big a difference between them after all. That's what all my indications and all the numbers are pointing towards at the moment. The one thing I haven't found out though is what it's like at a constant, say, 50 miles an hour. So we'll try and do that sort of test uh, in a little bit when we've finished this test now. What else can I tell you about this Fiat 500 electric? Um, it does seem to have a lot of the standard features that you'd expect other electric cars to have. The safety rear collision, the rear cameras, the blind spot collision, all of those sort of things. It seems to have all of those. Um, the seats are very, very comfortable. They're, they're not... They're not flat like the Zoe seats. I find the Zoe seats are very basic and very flat and don't hold you that well. Uh, these are a halfway point between being sporty and holding you and really sporty like the Mini is and holding you really, really well. So I would compare these seats to the Ionic. The Ionic has very similar feeling bases to the seats um, and backs. Yeah, very, very comfortable fake leather. I'll guess these are fake leather seats. But yeah, I, I would have no problem driving this car over a longer distance is my initial thought on the car. Uh, it's really bugging me that this trip meter thing is flashing at 803 miles now. Um, that, that is bugging me a lot. So on paper, this Fiat 500 looks like a better electric car than the Mini Electric. Um, it, it has a bigger battery, it can charge to a higher uh, number of kilowatts, and it's got a longer range on WLTP. So everything electric car wise makes this Fiat 500 electric look like a better electric car. But on the little little things I'm noticing, like the efficiency, like the anecdotal notes about range, and, and my being unable to unplug the charge cable earlier which again it might just be that I haven't got a setting right or I did something wrong you know but yeah there's some bits that are better there are some bits that aren't but again I really don't think that's going to put anyone off because I keep comparing to the mini electric because of course I own a mini electric and I like the mini electric so I'm trying to present what other people might like in this car I don't like it the steering's far too light it's too wallowy um, it's not sporty enough doesn't hold you enough and the stuff just doesn't seem to work as accurately and as reliably as the mini now I don't like the mini eye interface with the dial twiddling the media system etc I don't find that very nice at all um, but this one's even worse so I, I don't like this at all the Hyundai one was a much better media system so for me this this car's not for me um, there's no feel to it the acceleration's not really really quick um, I like I like the coasting mode and I like the uniqueness to it and I like some of the comfort but I wouldn't want to own this car um, it doesn't it doesn't do it for me but Susan I bet would prefer this to my Mini Electric and she'd prefer it because of the simple higher seating position and the more visible stuff here and none of the software features matter to her at all because she doesn't look at them or use them so you know we could probably go for the entry level without all the tech because she doesn't use any of it so for her um, it's really easy to maneuver um, <coughs> The hat, the, oh, the horn. Oh, I'm not sure if that's very nice at all um, or not. But I think Susan would like this car more than my Mini Electric because the Mini Electric is firmer, harder, sportier, and she doesn't need that or want that. But for Susan, the one thing she wants is um, cracker. 
cracker needs to be comfortable in the back so we couldn't have the convertible we'd have to have the hatch and put the seats down and put a cage in the back so i think i think we could have the fiat 500 and i think it would work for susan and cracker and i think she'd really enjoy the car and the fact that it has got a little bit more range and i'm not going to deny it it does have a little bit more i don't think it's enough to make a difference in your charging planning and charging stops it just gives a little bit more contingency perhaps one of the things that i really notice um, with the fiat 500 and the mini is what you're drawn to from a design point of view with the mini there's this um, circular line that goes around the car on my model it's a chrome trim line and it's almost you could almost imagine the roof and the windscreen coming off and the car just being a flat open um, tub and then everything's built on top of that and you've got then circles circles and curves are added everywhere but it's that flat line and the curves and the circles that stand out as a design feature that make it look like a mini now the fiat 500 doesn't really have that it has a line down the side a continuous dynamic light line um, and it looks very nice but it's not it's not the prominent line like there is around the mini the prominent line on this appears to be the curve over the entire top the entire jelly mold shape um, and it's, it's a rather nice shape because even the boot line there's no boot sticking out um, it's that shape that's really really nice the inset door handles make it nice and then the grill area the front on this fiat 500 is probably the nicest electric car grill front area i've seen because you could almost imagine that it's not an electric car it just looks right it's a good bit of design it's effective for an electric car and it doesn't look out of the way um you can still see um, a radiator through one of the grills and stuff it's what have we got there a nissan leaf Yeah, Nissan Leaf, a great one. So I like some of the design features, but they, they are very, very different to the Mini, the design features. Um, if I look at this dash on the inside, what stands out to me is the prominent things. Well, the dash is very flat. In fact, it slopes down towards the base of the windscreen. Now, I sort of like that because it's leading you to the front of the car. Um, so that's quite nice. There's like an, a very zeppelin like look to the dash display it's very oval um but very zeppelin like um and it's very nice and underneath the cross hatch plastic trim that's there in the center which looks like it's soft but it's actually quite hard um so if i tap it it's not it's not soft but underneath it is a continuous line of air vents well it looks like a continuous line of air vents where in fact it's four individual vents but it's a nice line under there a nice design feature and very effective for control of where the air goes so very very good but having said that and where the air goes it's very interesting that the controls here allow me to put it onto my feet or put it into the cabin and my feet but there isn't a setting to put it onto the windscreen and feet or windscreen and in the cabin if you put it on the windscreen option the other ones go off so a bit quirky again as to the direction of the airflow another negative here we go another negative that i've seen um, when we're driving along at like 50 60 miles an hour that i did on the road previously i did notice a lot of shake on the rear view mirror so actually the visibility out of the back was all blurred because it was vibrating a lot so the rear view mirror isn't damped and isn't fixed very well from the point of view of um, holding steady and giving you a clear view out of the back so that's a bit of a shame i think that's the sort of quirk with this car there's some great quality features but then there's some really some naff ones where you think oh they should have spent a bit of thought and money there making that better all right i'm gonna to have to do another lap i'm gonna do a lap of four even though i haven't done it in other cars because we're up to 5.5 miles per kilowatt hour so we've got there eventually to the same level of performance that i got driving in the city center and we what we want to know is what is the ultimate performance you can expect from the car But again, I think it's got a 37.2, 37.3 kilowatt hour battery size. So if you times that by 5.4 miles per kilowatt hour, and we're only just at 5.5 fractionally now, um, 
that gives you a 199 mile range. So although it's WLTP and it's supposed to be like a mixed combined <laughs> range, not a chance. Um, that really 199 range is possible only in peak summer conditions and only in absolute city driving. I'll tell you what, let's turn the air conditioning off and the fan speed down. So we'll just try that and we'll get a, a clue now as to whether the miles per kilowatt hour can go up. And hopefully the uh, camera won't overheat too fast. Noise wise, I haven't mentioned that have I, noise wise it's very very quiet in here. Um, there's not a lot of road noise so the tyres are doing really well but most of the noise are coming from the lumps and bumps as we go over. Um, there's a little bit of electric whir noise as I accelerate you can hear the motor and it's a nice electric car sound um, and the noise with the Vi uh, what do they call it? The virtual engine sound, the simulated sound to help pedestrians hear the car coming at low speeds. That sounds, it's all right. Yeah, um, nothing bad about it at all. The indicator noises are okay. They're not as nice and not as usable as the minis, in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, they're okay and nice. Just try the windscreen jets. Oh, three, look at the three jets. That's rare, isn't it? You normally only get two triple jets on the Fiat 500 very nice so we're still at 136 miles range um, I have traveled 23 miles um, in this trip plus 10 more so so far this is indicating a range of 159 169 miles so indicated range even though I'm absolutely pussyfooting around and we're now getting 5.6 miles per kilowatt hour that's the best we've seen it's still only showing a hundred and sixty something miles of range Whereas if you multiply the 5 point something miles per kilowatt hour times the battery size of 37.2 or 3 kilowatt hours, um, it should be getting more like 190 miles of range. So it looks like the GOM, the guesser meter, is quite conservative. This has been a very, very enjoyable drive. I, I've had more fun driving the Fiat 500 electric than I did driving the Vauxhall Corsa. I found the Vauxhall Corsa very very numb um, and there was very little to it but in its ride quality I've got to say the Corsa was better quality ride wise Fiat have um, I don't know they've done something here where the car lumps too hard over bumps it's, it's too hard on the wheels and the tires but it's very soft on the suspension and I don't quite work, I can't work out how that is, but it's a combination of both. It's soft and wallowy, but it's really brittle over bumps, and I don't, I don't quite like that. The Honda E was very soft and very, very comfortable. So turning the air conditioning off for a short period of time, the miles per kilowatt hour has now crept up to 5.7 miles per kilowatt hour with the air conditioning off. So that really is the absolute best that this car can achieve, 5.7 miles per kilowatt hour, unless you are going to hyper mile at 20 miles an hour. I would almost say I've driven slower and more economically in this than I have the other cars I've tested on this route, because I am trying my absolute best to get the best values out of this. I can just hear an unusual fan noise. And it's the air conditioning fan. So that shows how quiet the car is. I can hear not the whoosh of air, but I can hear a fan in the background. Um, so the car is very, very quiet. But the air conditioning fan is a bit more noisy <laughs> than some of the other cars I've tested. Either that or it's really quiet inside this cabin. 
I do like the USB sockets. There's a um, wireless charger on the top here underneath the air conditioning controls. There's a USB socket on the top for connecting. Inside where the cup holders are, there's another USB socket and a 12 volt socket. So there are two accessible sockets. Um, then there's more storage in the center armrest as well. Uh, not huge amounts, but you know, there are some. The side door bins are sort of accessible and very small. And the glove box is a decent size. The glove box looks like a decent size, but there's not a lot of storage. But enough for your mobile phones and uh, your battery charger and a couple of bits and pieces and your covered mask so yeah um not bad i would say the thing that i'm liking most about the interior of this car is this zeppelin style oval dash and then this um painted gray plastic trim around the edge it's quite attractive and quite nice um I quite like that. I don't mind the park, reverse, neutral and drive buttons being on the front rather than down here on the centre armrest area. This, again, it's very, very nice. It's a real, it's a pleasant place to be. There's a lot that's likeable in this Fiat 500. Yeah, I've got to say on those fan speeds, when the fan speed's low enough that I can't hear the air coming through the vents, I can hear this whirring noise of a motor that's coming from the front right hand side of the car and it, it's it's really bugging me that there's this it's like there's a fly buzzing around in here and I can just hear this low frequency or high frequency noise it's um it's not very nice but if you turn the fan speed up now I can hear the air rushing through and it's louder than that noise so I can't hear it um, so with music on with the windows open it's absolutely fine and with the fan speeds up I can't hear it it's absolutely fine but when you when you go in silent mode and turn everything off and uh, you're having a really really quiet moment in the car that fan noise or motor noise that's coming out of the right hand side somewhere that that that's bugging me but I have got really sensitive hearing and I can hear things really really well so I would bet most people won't even notice that noise so let's um have a bit of a test here let's not speed up but um come down this hill a little bit faster than i was before and test the one pedal driving and see what the regen's like so we're getting quite close now so i'll probably be about to lift off in the mini now yeah, you see plenty of plenty of regen. That's enough to slow you down for the corner. So even though it's only got a low amount of regen that it's showing, it's effective, it's enough for normal gentle driving at 30 odd miles an hour. I think if you're coming down there at 70 miles an hour and then expected regen to stop you, not a chance, <laughs> not a chance. All right, I'm starting to get really hot in the car now and um, uncomfortable with the air conditioning off so the phone's probably going to go off soon so let me say goodbye thank you so much for watching this video i hope you've enjoyed it i hope it's been informative um, i hope i've been unbiased and um, have looked at every angle for this car to try and work out what i think of it but it is just my opinion and i think with this sort of car like the honda like the mini like this fiat 500 opinions will vary greatly with this car because it's very personal and that's what these cars are about what you personally like and what you don't like i bet people fall in love with this car and would only want this electric car whereas for me i much more prefer the mini so again thank you so much for watching uh, i hope this video doesn't turn out to be too long uh, my filming has been over an hour now um, and i've been rambling on so i hope i can edit it down to a very sensible uh, video size but if not i apologize for the length of the video as well take care see you again soon for another test drive some more information on solar batteries and all sorts of other good stuff because i do have other electric cars i want to test i do have a mac e on order for a test drive i can't wait to test that one take care see you again soon bye for now and as always just as i think the test drive's over and i've got nothing else to tell you i'll just tell you something else um, i was just noticing now i was driving between 30 and 40 miles an hour 
and I was trying to modulate the throttle as you do in an electric car for a nice smooth drive and it is very BMW i3 like it was very flighty on and off um, acceleration and charge and a bit yo-yo-ish so if I can feel that in the driver's seat in the passenger seat I bet Susan feels a little bit sick um, hopefully I'll take Susan out in the car this afternoon but um, yeah so in range mode with the regen on at 30 to 40 miles an hour so it's going slightly above city driving it was yo-yoing a bit and um, not as pleasant uh, an environment to be in so I'm not sure passengers would enjoy that very much I bet coasting mode so the normal mode would be much more pleasurable um, for passengers so anyway, I look forward to doing that test with Susan and see what it's like. But I thought I'd let you know um, another very, very small observation. And again, it's just my spidey senses, you know, sensing the car and how it feels and trying to pay attention to the details. Um, yeah, modulating the throttle and trying to hold it exactly at coasting mode isn't very easy. It flicks between recharge and drive much more.